is happening, you two? Welcome back to the Seven Show. First week of the Premier League, down and dusted. What a great weekend it was in the opening round, lads. Anyways, to the right of me, the one, the only, Chris. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all glad the Premier League's back. I am. Go continue. Yeah, what a ripper he had. Anyways, to the left of me, the one, the only, Edgar. Yeah, man, I'm on a bit of a high right now. It's done a little ugly, but I'm just happy the Premier League's back. Yeah. And I'm happy to talk football with you boys. Mate, we are sitting pretty, all three of us. Yes, sir. Three points the opening weekend. Yep. Seriously, on a serious note, though, we've got to be happy with that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. First things first, lads, let's talk about the results of the opening weekend. Went okay for some big teams, but not for all big teams. Yes. But anyways, lads, let's get into the first game. I'm looking more at Edgar. Man United kicked off the opening game of the Premier League. 1-0 victory against Tottenham. Give us your opinions on that. Yeah, man. Uh, what, what do we have? Three debutants, did you say? Romero. Five. <sighs> was it Romero, Schneiderlin, Depay? Uh, Damian, Damian. Sh- uh, Schneiderlin. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'll, I'll, initially, looking at the lineup, I was worried. I'm thinking, are these guys going to glue? Are they going to get straight into it? And then looking at the Spurs lineup, you know, I was just thinking, Pochettino's lined up a little negative with Dian midfield. Uh, Dembele on the wing, so I was thinking, you know, we're going to come at this. Spurs are going to counter on us. And, um, mate, it turned out, like, Spurs had the best of the first half, I'd say. The opening chance for Ericsson. I felt Tottenham had the best... Starts to yeah. each half, yeah. but as the game got on, or as, as each half went we on, controlled, but we, we didn't were better. Yeah, yeah, you know. But um, yeah, look, Ericsson pops that in four minutes. It's a different game, man. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Now I know you're a big Tottenham fan, so <laughs> any thoughts of the game? Well, um, I thought it was. I'll give you a neutral point of view. I thought it was a pretty, pretty uh, poor game. Oh, it was. It was. Yeah. It was bang let's, average. Let's not sugarcoat that. It was an awful game. Yeah, and like like Edgar said, Edgar said, Tottenham definitely started the better. First 20 minutes, I, I was thinking Tottenham's going to score soon, but that co- that goal kind of shell shocked them a little bit, and it really it really put them in their shell. Um, they started to sit back too deep, and Kane just had no support whatsoever. He done well when he got he the looked ball. lively. He looked he, good. He looked like he really needed that. They should have started maybe with Lamella, and maybe just Levin Dyer, not in in central defensive midfield for me. They really struggled <laughs> like that middle of the park. Yeah, Bentaleb like, had an absolute shocker. Yeah, him and uh, Eric Eric Dyer was okay, but I just felt like he, he just a bit of inexperience yeah, in the midfield, yeah. especially up against Carrick and Schneider. I, I mean, he's done a defensive job, but going forward, what's he going to provide for you, man? Mm. Yeah, definitely. I thought um, Alderweireld had a had a really good game. Probably Spurs he best was, player. He was solid, man. Real solid. Was, with the ball, some of his passing was unbelievable. For me, man of the match, Chris Smalling. Yep. bossed it. He had, was. Had, I was. I was yeah. so so pleased with his performance. Had Kane sorted the entire day, man. Yeah, I, even though I thought Kane played well, you're right. Chris Smalling played really well. Fantastic. Damian, was, I was impressed with. Yeah, absolutely. Great debut. He looked pretty good. Memphis was a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, absolutely. I felt like the pace of the Premier League caught up with him. Yeah. I felt as soon as the game started, he was lively. Done a few good things. But as the game worn on, he you could tell he was getting really, yeah. really tired. Yeah. I don't know if he's lacking match fitness or what. I thought Wamata had a good game. Yeah, solid, man. If anyone who I was a little bit disappointed Stardew. would... No, no, no. Wayne Rooney, in my yeah? opinion. Okay. I just thought... Maybe it's because he hasn't played up front for yes, a long yeah, time. That's exactly what I was thinking. R- Rain Rooney looked like a striker who has who hasn't played in that position for such a long time. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, enough of that game. Uh, let's get to Bournemouth against Villa. One 0 victory. Mika Richards captaining for the first time. Bournemouth at home, first game in the Premier League, mate, and they got done one nil. Packed house, mate. Eleven thousand was it? Eleven thousand. I d- honestly mate. did not know it held that eleven thousand. I thought it was a bit more than that, nah, but... man. It's a small place, but um. <laughs> but Premier time, League football. Premier Tim League Sherwood football. off to a winning start. Yep. First time he's ever started a Premier League season as well. Yeah, it's first first time he's ever had a preseason to work with his, his yeah. uh, players. But I thought, yeah, I thought it was just um. I was actually with a friend of mine. He's a Blackburn Rovers supporter, and he said to me. Gesteda will score a header. Did you say that? He said Gesteda will score a header. Because <laughs> he said, I've got bad luck when it comes to players, and uh, it, it ended up happening. Oh my god, that's yeah. unreal. Anyway, it's probably, probably the best game of the round for me yeah. Everton Watford. What a cracking game that was. Ross Barkley, what a cracker. Stunning shot, man. But you have to say, <laughs> Everton were disappointing in that game, especially yeah. newly promoted Watford at Goodison Park. You've you got to be able to hold that result, man. You think Everton will come home with the chocolates? Yeah, absolutely. But fair play to Watford. Anyways, Leicester. They were up. Was I? Was I? Were they four 0 up, or was it three yeah, one? Three one. Four one. Three one. Three one. Yeah, yeah. Leicester dominated Sunderland. Yeah. Mate, what's his name? Dick Avocat. 
he looks to be having a nightmare at the minutes. But in saying that, there's a long way, long time to go. Norwich losing 3-1 at home to Crystal Palace. What a start by Alan Pardew Absolutely. as well. I keep doubting this man, Alan Pardew, and he keeps delivering. So, yeah. Johan could buy a goal on his debut. Hey, for, for all you Aussies out there, Miller Yednek can't even get into the side. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing. The club captain just struggling. Mm. And the biggest shock of the... No, no, oh, no, sorry. The second biggest shock of the weekend, Chelsea drawing 2-2 with Swansea. Yeah. I watched that game and that was amazing. Courtois sent off. And to be fair to Swansea, they deserved everything they got. Yeah. They were fantastic that Yeah, game. they pushed on for it, man. And for me, that game, Hazard was really, really disappointing. Yeah, he's... You didn't even see him, man. Didn't create next to nothing. Yeah. I thought the the best player Oscar. Chelsea had was Oscar. Yeah, I enjoyed Oscar. For a man that they reckon wasn't going to be there this season, he delivered well. Yeah. Now, probably my favourite game of the weekend was Arsenal losing 2-0 to West Ham. Yeah. And why I say it was my favourite is because I was not expecting that at all. Yeah. Hey, man. I was expecting Arsenal to be on top of the league after the first round. Yeah. I don't, know, I, don't ask me why. I just thought West Ham were going to smash him. Mate, boy, was I wrong. Yeah, I was think if, if there was a game I would have put my house on, it would have definitely been this game. So yeah, exactly. It really surprised me. when I, I actually didn't watch the game live. I, when I woke up in the morning, I couldn't believe that they actually <laughs> the result. got up. Did yeah. you watch the game again? Yeah, look, for, look, I'd give the first 40 to Arsenal. I mean, West Ham defended well for the most part, but then just before the half break... They can see yeah, that. Ra- Ram- Ramsey gives away that free kick. They pop it in, Peter Cech, no man's land. How disappointing was Peter Cech? Both right. goals. Well, like you said, man, it was not in the script, and um, you expect someone of that quality to be delivering a lot better than that, man. I oh, know, and even the uh, second goal with. Um, mate, uh, you gotta get your feet sorted, you gotta cover that front post. Who scored again? Zarate. Zarate. Mate, he just had a shot near post. Yeah. And when he sh- shot that, I was thinking to myself, ah, oh, Cech's got yeah, that covered. Yeah, man, that, he was so out of position. That should be rolling up into your arms, mate, and you're setting up a counter attack. Yeah, anyways, uh, at, at the same time that was going on, it was Newcastle 2 and uh, Southampton 2. Yeah. A good game for Southampton. Newcastle, they look to be much better than last season. When yelled him, he looks to be a some sort of player. Yeah. Really happy with him. But Southampton will be happy with the uh, point as, the, as well. I watched um, that game and I tell you, Newcastle were very, very lucky to hold on in the last 15 minutes. They, they, that, um, Mummy. Mane, is it Mane? Yeah, Mane. Mane, Mane. 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 He had so many chances. He's yeah, very good, isn't he? He looks very good, yeah. He's got a quick turn of just yeah. pace, man. Yeah, he does. Six feet on him. Anyways, a game that Chris is very excited for. Stoke nil, Liverpool won. And to be fair, last week you said you didn't see that coming. No, I didn't see it. I, I did see it. I thought we would have at least conceded one goal. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Especially it. after conceding six, well, like, only a few months before seven, that. 77 days ago. Not, not that anyone's <laughs> counting. Who's counting? Yeah, but it was, it was a great performance by Liverpool. I think the most important uh, perform, uh, thing about the result is that we actually got the clean sheet. And Dayan Lovren had a, had a very, very good game. He was my man of the match. Oh, probably, really? And probably a lot of the Liverpool fans man of the match. Uh, uh, we can't really speak too much considering the quality of the United game, but that game put me to sleep, man. Yeah, I mean, probably, it was difficult to watch. You can tell a lot of, not just those two yeah, games, yeah, you know, yeah. but the first game back in the Premier League, yeah, a lot of rusty, players are rusty. rusty. I tell yeah. you what, Coutinho would have woken you up, though. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know, what a girl! I was telling Curtis, when I saw that go in, I'm thinking, Butlin got a hand to it, yeah. and the dude should be doing better. I saw the reverse angle, I shut up that quick. He, d- he done well to get an actual yeah. hand on that, you know. I was like, alright. Mate, the ball, mm-hmm. mate. Yeah. It was a goal that we needed. We needed to start the season like that. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking before Gomez. He really impressed you. Yeah, Gomez impressed me. Um, I'll go back to Lovren. Lovren was kind of um, was on the same side as as Gomez. So he's got kind of uh, like he has to help Gomez out a little bit. And he and I could see him talking and trying to lead him, guide him through. And I think it helped Gomez. And that's another credit to Lovren. That he was trying to help Gomez as well. How would you, you like Ibe? Sorry, yeah, Ibe didn't have. To me, he didn't have the the best game like that he's had for Liverpool. Um, I thought he was he was okay, but when he came off and uh, for, they brought Firmino on, he kind of looked like giving him a little bit of extra an extra option, yeah. and he, he impressed me a little bit when he came on. Yeah. Um, now there's talks that Lallana might be dropped for this weekend, and Firmino might be getting a start. Got a bad game. Man. A poor, your opinions on that? Yeah, I think I think um, that's what I would probably say is going to happen. I think Lallana will get dropped. For me, Lallana is a good squad player, but he's not in our best eleven when everyone's firing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think 
out of that team, the only probably two would be, I think, Emre Chan would come into that team and Firmino would probably come into that team. Yeah. Uh, now, another player I want to talk about is Lucas. There's a lot of talk about him in preseason, but Lucas seems to be on the out at the minute. I think um, he's just, after this game, he's just realised that he's probably not yeah. in the first choice. They've yeah. numbered um, maybe. And... Uh, I think he could still do a job as a squad player. Yeah. Like, but however, if he thinks he's getting into the first choice ahead of Emre Chan, who they should be looking to bring into that. He had a great game. Yeah, he, he had a great game when he came. When he kind of changed the whole dynamic of the game because he changed our formation to a four-three-three, and it kind of changed everything. You know. Fair play to Brendan Rodgers. You know they've got a very hard start to the season. And to get three points at Stoke away, especially after getting smashed 6 1 there, fair play to them. Anyways, the last game of the weekend uh, West Brom nil, Man City 3. They look to be the real deal. They, that really impressed me, that performance. Uh, yeah, yeah, Toure rolling back the years, mate. What, what two goals he scored? Yeah. And uh, company scoring uh, a goal as well. Yeah, post so. click, yeah. City look good, and that sets up the uh, game this week with uh, yeah. City versus Chelsea. That looks to crack be a game, cracker. Man. But anyways, lads, let's get to your Twitter questions. Right, so I asked on Twitter yesterday, you guys um, asked me some Twitter questions for The Seven Show, and I've got a few here today. Now, a massive hot topic in the YouTube community, uh, especially from the Arsenal-West Ham game, was Mirzat Ozil versus Payet. Uh, he had a cracking, cracking game for his first game in the Premier League. He had a few decent games in the Europa League leading up to this game. But what are your thoughts on Ozil and Payet? How everyone's comparing them to? And which one do you think is the better player? Edgar, I'll go with you first, mate. Well, for me, honestly, this is a no contest. I mean, just the fact that Ozil's played at the highest level in terms of the dude's won a World Cup. He's done it with Real Madrid. Yes, he's at Arsenal right now. And he's kind of underperforming. But what's Payet done to even be compared to Ozil for me? I mean, when I, when I saw the video, just straight out, I thought, you know what? This is an Ozil hate video rather than Payet's a lot better than him. I mean, we haven't really seen much. We've seen what one solid 90 minutes of him against Ozil. You can't really compare the two yet. Yeah, and... Your opinions, Chris? Oh well, I think it's I think it's a bit silly to compare the two so early. It's like saying, "Oh, Reese Oxford has a good game. Let's uh, let's compare him to I don't know, uh, Cazorla yeah. or something like that." <laughs> you just can't. It's just too early. Give, give him, give Pi. I think Pi will be a great buy for West Ham. You can yeah. see yeah. his stats that he's involved in a lot of the go- a lot of goals team score. And he looks to but, get involved. Yeah, he's got a lot to to build up to to, to the likes of Ozil, who's played as he said for Real Madrid and at the highest level. Yeah, been there, yeah. done that, man. Yeah, I've got to agree with you guys as well. I have to say. Ozil, if I had to pick one or the other, if they were up against a wall and I was the captain, I'd probably pick Ozil, just because he has been there and done that. But in saying that, what has he done recently? I'm talking the yeah, last couple of years. That, that's what I mean. He has done... Uh, forget Real Madrid, forget the World yeah. Cup and all that stuff involved with it. We're talking right now as it stands. And for me, when you look at them side by side right now, if I have to pick one, it's very, very even in my opinion. Forget the history. You just got to look at each player, what they can deliver. And for me, Ozil is a massive, massive disappointment. He's heavily overrated, in my opinion. Arsenal fans talk him up like he's the best number 10 in the world. He is so far from that. I'd rather Santi Cazola in my team before Ozil. I'd rather Aaron Ramsey in my team before Ozil. So that's my opinion about Ozil versus Paye. Anyways, next question we got one here from Valley Curlo, and he asks, how big of a success would Pedro be if he came to Manchester United? Edgar, I'll leave that with you. Um, it's a really good question. Um, thanks for that one. Um, I want to say Pedro is going to be a good player for us. Uh, I just don't see him scoring 15 a season from the wing, yep. but I see him contributing a lot in play. You know what I mean, like there's one, two, three around the corner, getting crosses in. Getting Rooney involved, getting Mata involved. You know what I mean, he's going to be a good link-up player, but I don't see him being, you know, like anywhere near the top ten in the world. Yeah, he scored the winner today yeah, in the did. Super Cup, coming off the bench. Barcelona not starting him, bit controversial. But uh, your opinions on Pedro coming to United, if uh, that deal was to happen? I disagree with Edgar to a point where I, I would say he he will. I reckon he will come into United and score fifteen goals in a season. I think anything less. He's probably a bit of a disappointment, judging on his record of how many goals he does score when he does play. Um, What's I, his record? Does he I, score I many know, goals? He does score. He does score a lot of goals for Barcelona. Yeah, he, he gets them. I think um, any anyone. I'm a Liverpool 
Liverpool support, and I probably don't like it United as much as anybody, but I would still say that Pedro will be an excellent signing for Manchester United, and I do not want you know, a team like Manchester United to, to, to get a player like that. Yeah, Pedro, my opinion on Pedro, I think he's a good, solid player, but... I know this is bad to say this now, but I'd rather, much rather, Di Maria than Pedro. Just because he's the player we need. We need speed. We need chance created. You're saying Pedro scores a lot of goals for Barcelona. He is not going to have that many chances at United that he has yeah, at Barcelona. Mm-hmm. At United, he's probably going to get like two chances a game. You know, He's got to take those two chances. At Barcelona, he probably gets about six or seven chances yeah, a game. You know, yeah. So I don't see Pedro coming in and being the impact that Di Maria had when he first came. And he was our, by far, our best player. Took the Premier League by storm. My opinion, Pedro is not going to be that. He's going to be a good squad player. And, but in saying this, Ashley Young... He's in great form at the minute. Well, I, and Louis Van Gaal's in love with him. Like, yeah. I, I can't even see Pedro getting in the team. Well, the thing that I noticed about Van Gaal, he likes the structure, man. He likes organisation. He likes players sticking to That's their That's what role. Pedro brings. He's yeah. that defensive work. Yeah, so, and, mate, actually, Young gives you work rate and then some, but... You know, in terms of the quality uh, yeah. going forward, you know, that's a different story. All right, on to the next question. This is from Jack Kelly. Would you like United to give more youngsters a chance to continue, uh, sorry, or continue assigning great players to improve positions? Um, by the way, loves the show. Thanks, Jack. Now, I want to ask that for United and Liverpool as well. Would you want United to continue buying Pedro or don't buy Pedro? Use the likes of Yanaze. Pereira, Wilson, give the, those guys uh, a chance. Well, yeah, that, that's what I was saying to one of the guys on Twitter. Sorry, I forget your name, but um, I said, if we are losing Di Maria, I hope that means that Pereira, Yanazai, and Lingai can duke it out for a spot. If they can't provide the quality, then maybe bring someone in, but at least give the guys but a chance. But right team. now, as we speak, there's like two weeks to go yep. in the transfer window. What would you rather? Would you rather Pedro or would you rather use the youngsters? Youngsters. You'd rather use the yeah. youngsters? Give them a chance, man. If, if you're not you're Man United quality, then... You go. I, I disagree with that just for the fact that it's all well and good having the youngsters, but we just don't have any experienced players in those positions right now. We've got Memphis already. You look on the other wing, we've got Mata. He's not even a winger. Yeah, but how do you get experience without even testing them if we sell them off? We're bringing big, someone world class regret. who's... Cha- how many Champions League has Pedro won? He knows the team qualities... Well, you know, well, I'll give you the number one example, mate, Pogba. We didn't give him a chance, and look what he's turned out to be. You've got to give the guys a chance before you can even... I'm just talking in the positions that Pedro, Pedro will yeah. play. Yeah. I think we need experience there, not yeah. youngsters. We've got too many youngsters there. We've got Who's our experienced winger? That's the thing, man. We haven't got one now. It's, We've got rid of him more. Chance, it's your chance to become that winger. Okay, That's the way man. I see it, man. Uh, Chris, uh, great question, by the way. Liverpool, would you rather youngsters... Get given a chance? Or would you rather, you know, like who? What do you need a midfielder right now? Liverpool centre back. Oh, you kind of can see that Gomez is giving is getting given a chance at eighteen. But I think I'm a fan of if you're old, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Okay, you know? yeah, that's uh, true. But also, it depends as well because you, you kind of are you going to take that risk of dropping three points or, or, or missing out in the Champions League because you've given these. There's no more sentiments in football anymore, and it's exactly. Like, these youngsters aren't giving chances, and that's why they're probably being loaned out, and uh, hopefully they benefit elsewhere. That just you just struck something really good with me there, Wayne Rooney. Okay, if he goes down in the Champions League or just get quarterfinals or something like that, do we right now get a striker to be the number one, or do we get use James Wilson up there? What well, would you well, rather? Well, I'm happy with Wilson and Hernandez right now. Well, Hernandez is basically yeah, already gone to West Ham. It looks like that. So, so what would you rather? Would you rather another youth player bumped up or get quality in? I'd rather someone else, but not someone that's the caliber of Wayne Rooney. Do you know what I mean? So like for me, so not a youngster. You would want experienced. It's got to be a blend. We're talking like in that striking position, but on the wing you've got space to do things. You've got creativity to do. do you okay. know what I mean, but when it comes to goals, mate, you need goals. So experience, yeah. experience. or youngsters? Can you answer the question? Oh look, no, no. For for this question in particular here, I'm going youngsters. Come on, nigga. You got splinters in your bumps. Still sitting on the fence. Youngsters, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. This comes from Craig. All right, Craig, who is the surprise player uh, to watch out of this season? Chris, we'll go with you. Far out, man. Put him on the spot here. Surprise player. <laughs> Do you have any, Edgar, what we can think of? Surprise player. That Oxford from West Ham was one oh, on the yeah, weekend. Yeah, but, no. but of the season, who's going to be the surprise that nobody's looking at? It's definitely a tough one. Well, 
You know, for me, I was, I was saying to Chris Gomez, um, I got to watch, you know, just uh, the preseason games that they came down to Australia. And, dude, to be 18 years old on the ball like that is terrific, man. Um, you know, he's already getting comparisons to Ferdinand. He started in the first game of the season. Ideally, I think he is a centre-back. And considering this guy was at Charlton last season, to be starting your first game like that against Walters, brilliant debut. Fair play. There's a lot to come from him. Yourself, Chris? Uh, I'll probably... I don't know if it's a surprise, but I could see uh, a- Andre Ayew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Andre He Ayu looks ha- good, yeah, doesn't he? Because even just the way he took that goal, was just oh, nice, class, man. you the, know. The drag back. Yeah, so I'd say him, and for, and from a Liverpool point of view, I, I think Jordan Ivey is ready to have a, a barnstorming season this season. A cracker. Um, I'm not too sure I'll go with. I, if I have to say anyone that's... This guy's not really a surprise. He's already been here and done it, but just no one's really talking about him. Johan Kabai. Mate, he looks to be the goods already coming back. He just like he just fits straight he's, back in. He's a proven player, man. He is. So I probably have to say Johan can buy. Uh, but in, in saying that, my surprise player. I just thought of him now. When Yeldon from Newcastle, oh, he ooh. looks to be good. The header was unbelievable. Oh, man. a cracker! But anyways, lads, let's talk about the preview for this weekend coming up. Right, lads. So this weekend coming up now for the first time in the Premier League, I think ever. I could be wrong. Maybe they've done this beforehand years ago, but pretty much not in our lifetime. A Friday night game involving United, Edgar. Mm-hmm. We're away at Villa Park to Aston Villa. My prediction for this weekend: United are going to win two one. Yeah, two one for me. That's yeah. what I reckon. Oh, I'll back you on that, but I'll go uh, two nil. Two nil. Yep. Chris. I think Dennis, Dennis Comedia and Bruce McAvoy will, will enjoy calling this game. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think United will win, United will win 1 0 or 2 1. Alright, uh, Southampton versus Everton. I'm going to go with oh, Southampton. I reckon Southampton are going to win this one. Yeah, I'm going to back Southampton as well. Serious questions on that Everton back line. And you alerted me uh, during the week, Chris. Everton's fixtures coming up. They're what? How many games? Next nine games. <sighs> Mate, it's unbelievable. Their next Martinez, games. could he seriously be up for the sack? He could They're... be up for the sack. Or he, could, he could be up for manager of the year. It depends on how they go the <laughs> next nine weeks. I, you... sent, I sent a random text to three people... Saying without checking the fixture, where will Everton be? And everyone after they seen the fixture said bottom three. Like first they said top eight, and then they I said yeah, bottom yeah, three. Yeah, I said top eight. You know? <laughs> so that's how hard their fixture is. Go check out Everton's top nine. Uh, the next nine fixtures, unreal. All right, Tottenham at home to Stoke. I'm gonna go with uh, Tottenham. Oh, Harry Kane to get his first goal. I'm gonna go with a draw, man. I just um, I I don't know. I just was not impressed by Spurs going forward. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I'm going to tip Spurs to win. I think, I think that they have to be up for this game. You know, this is a massive game for them. First game at home, and I think they should they should get the points. I'm gonna. All right, now the next game, Sunderland versus Norwich. It's uh, tough. Yeah, I'm going to actually tip Sunderland to turn things around. Jermaine Defoe hat trick. You heard it here first. <laughs> Is he, is he in your fantasy team, Curtis? He is. And he scored a goal on the weekend, <laughs> Jermaine Defoe. I'm, yeah. tipping, I'm tipping a draw. Draw? I'm going for the ugliest 1-0 win for Sunderland. 1-0 win? Okay, then. All right. Uh, Swansea versus Newcastle. And I reckon Swansea, after back of that great game they had at Stamford Bridge, yeah. I'm going to go with Swansea. Even though I reckon Newcastle are going to take him for the full 90 minutes. I just can't see Newcastle grabbing a, a point there, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm going back Swansea as well. Swansea as well, Chris? Yes, yeah, Swansea as well. All round Swansea for us. Watford at home for the first time in the Premier League against West Brom, who are massively disappointing oh, for yeah. the first game of the season. For me, this is going to be the first draw of the weekend. I'm tipping a draw. I'm backing Watford. Watford? Yeah, I'm going I'm going on form and I'm backing Watford as well because West Brom looked... Uh, all right, they were torn apart by a better side, but... Talking about in form, two sides in form. West Ham mm-hmm. versus Leicester. West Ham beating the Gunners or the Gooners. Leicester City 4 2 against Sunderland. Mates, I reckon at the bowling ground, the last time they're going to be there this season, they're going to kick things off and 3 uh, 0 win to West Ham. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I'm going to say a tough 2 1 West Ham. 2 1? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to give a result. I think think West Ham will win the game. Yeah, I I don't know why I said (laughs) (laughs) Alright, Palace up against Arsenal. (laughs) Lads, I'm doing it. I'm tipping... Crystal? I'm tipping a draw. Alright. 
Uh, I'm, I'm tipping Arsenal going to drop points. I, I, I think uh, Arsenal will win because, I don't know, if in, in recent times they've always seemed to bounce back after after early season losses. They always true. seem to bounce back with big wins. So I think it'll be a pretty comfortable win Very for Arsenal. true, but I always seem to find out that Arsenal have... They just... With any sort of pressure, they just always seem to crack for some reason. Yeah. All summer long was oh, title contenders, Arsenal, title contenders. And next thing you know, they folded on the opening day of the season, yeah. you know. So, I don't know, a bit disappointing, Arsenal. And you said... I'm sitting on the fence, mate. Draw. A draw as well? Yeah, but I thought you were going to tip the Crystal. Yeah, I was going to go Crystal, but uh, nah. I think Arsenal will probably get a 1-1 draw there. City against uh, Chelsea. Biggest game of next week. That is going to be a cracker on Sunday night. And you just got to go with the informed team. Yeah. Chelsea losing at home. They're away now. But I know Mourinho, he's going to make this boring as hell. He's going to make this <laughs> so defensive. Uh, hopefully Aguero starts. That's what City need, in my opinion. I'm going to go with a Man City 1-0 win. Yeah, I'm back in Man City as well, man. Purely on form. And um, Begovic to start. Yep. And uh, Chris? I'm tipping Man City as well. City all form around. As well. Form as well is a big reason why I'm tipping. City. Yeah, same. I think we're only going off That's form. That's all you can go off right now, man. Honestly. Yeah. Now, the last... Speaking of form. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of form. As Chris says, you can introduce... Oh, we got the Mighty Reds <laughs> against... Who's that team? Bournemouth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah, I reckon... I honestly reckon... I said this to a few people. Liverpool are going to smash uh, Bournemouth. Honestly, I think it could be something like 4 1 this game. Ooh, yeah. yeah. One, that means they have to score, man. <laughs> Pass Lovren. <laughs> no, I, think, I think it's going to be. Late, uh, I, think, yeah, I think I'm going to be watching this game still biting my fingernails, man. I think it's going to be a lot harder than people think, man, because we just do it to ourselves all the time. The only reason why I say it could be a threshing is that Aston Villa, they played really, really good at Bournemouth, you know. But in saying that, there's a lot to be changed. Yeah, you could be right, mate. Uh, Edgar? Yeah, I'm back in Liverpool, mate. Liverpool, so we're very similar on the tipping front, lads, and uh, that's pretty much it, lads, for this episode on The 7 Show. Now, don't forget, get your questions in for next week on The 7 Show. Use the hashtag 7 Show, as it appears right now. Um, And don't just ask any questions just on United or Liverpool. You can ask any questions you want regarding the Premier League, because that's what we pretty much cover. Uh, Lads, before we go, do you guys want to say anything? Yeah, I just want to say, guys... Follow me on Twitter and ask me questions whenever you want. Because uh, what's, your tw- like, what's your Twitter handle? It's uh, at Chris, M-E-L-B-L-F-C. It's in the link in the description. Yeah, just, just follow me and ask me questions. I'm always up for a discussion about football. <laughs> we love it. We actually love it. Yeah. Edgar? Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm going to back you on that one, Chris. Um, have what's, a what, discussion. What's your Twitter handle? Man, it's a difficult one, isn't it? <laughs> um, you can't even remember. That's going to be in the link in the description. That's his that's YouTube channel. Edgar C... We, we you you'll see it. It's at the side of the video. Just follow me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll retweet. I retweet these two all the time. Anyways, you'll see them there. But anyways, that's that's the end of the seven show. We will see you guys next week. Take care and peace.